At the ASI, we believe that central banks cause more economic crises than they solve. In a free market for money, banks raise the supply of money to meet changing demand from consumers and businesses. We don't think that we need a central bank. However, if we have to have one, we believe the central bank should mimic this policy regime as much as possible. In most countries, the central bank aims to maintain low, stable consumer price inflation. In the UK, the target is 2%. And if inflation comes in above 3% or below 1%, the governor of the Bank of England must write a letter to the Chancellor of the Exchequer explaining why. If they do think it'll come in above target, they increase interest rates and reduce the amount of money they're printing in order con to control demand and bring inflation down. If they think it'll come in below target, they reduce interest rates and increase the amount of money they're printing to bring demand up and to bring inflation back to target. However, the Bank of England doesn't always respond to above target or below target inflation because sometimes it believes these shocks to inflation are coming from the supply side. If they come from the demand side, it must change its policy to increase or decrease demand. However, the bank cannot do anything about supply and it shouldn't respond to those effects. So for example, during the Great Recession, inflation went above target for about five straight years and hit 5.2% twice. The bank did nothing and sometimes even eased policy, which was the correct response. So the bank's job is to decide whether shocks to inflation come from the supply side when they shouldn't respond or the demand side when they should respond. We at the ASI think this is an impossible task and we think that inflation targeting is therefore a flawed policy. During the early 2000s, an influx of talented polls meant that inflation went down, but the Bank of England didn't see this as a supply side shock. They mistakenly thought it was a demand side shock. They boosted inflation and arguably this was one of the factors leading up to the financial crisis. Similarly, after the financial crisis, inflation was above target for a period when it arguably should have been even more above target because there were such large supply side shocks. We think there's an alternative. We think that nominal GDP targeting is a better monetary policy. Nominal GDP is gross domestic product, the total amount of output in the economy without taking into account inflation. Another way of thinking about it is real GDP plus inflation. When inflation falls due to a productivity improvement, then real GDP rises at the same time, which means that nominal GDP, which is real GDP plus inflation, stays unchanged. And the same is true on the converse. This means that nominal, if you target nominal GDP at, say, a 4% growth rate, you automatically take into account where shocks are coming from, and you only respond to the ones that matter. As I've said, we at the ASI don't believe that we need a central bank. We think that free banking is a superior system. However, in the real world, central banks exist everywhere. So we try and guide central bank policy in the best possible direction. We think that best possible direction is nominal GDP targeting.